Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are so grateful for each one of you who is here this day. And we are so grateful for what the Lord has done us this day. We welcome you again in our Bible study today. And uh, we are so grateful for those who are coming and for those who are already here. You may have your seats. Thank you very much, worshippers who have led us and those who have prayed. May God bless you. Because of the time, we have a few minutes. And we want to use it profitably. Those who are coming us will find us on the way. And we want to begin sharing more deeply about this idea of overcoming. Uh, many servants of God have shared in different ways or different views or anointings uh, about overcoming. And today I want to take you some more deeper by adding on what others have shared Maybe at the end of this service, God will lift you to another ground. And today I want to share about the overcomer's mindset. <laughs> Those who overcome, what is in them? That propels them to overcome when others have been defeated. Or when others get stuck. That mindset is what I want to equip with you. Maybe. God will lift you to another level. Because the Bible says, I pray that you may prosper even as your soul prospers. So your progress cannot exceed your mindset. <laughs> it is your mind that leads your progress. And your progress gives you a step above another step. Let's begin from the theme scripture of 1 John 5, 4. And let's open it by being critical to some of the words used in this scripture. And it begins by saying, for whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. There is a full colony there. <laughs> <laughs> Those full colonies means this is a double full stop. Don't <laughs> even dare to read anything more. Not until you have exhausted to understand what this means. How a critical look. 
Understand each word which is in this scripture. And here, the key word I want to point you at is the word whatsoever. Not whosoever. <laughs> This word is not whosoever. It is whatsoever. Aha. So, in this scripture, it goes beyond a person. The overcoming issue is beyond you as a human being. It goes beyond your own physical, psychological, and spiritual person. So what is born of God here is not specifically you. <laughs> there is a lot that God Bears. God can bear to you an idea. And that idea makes you unique from all other people who are doing the same thing you are doing. God can bear you a gift. God can bear you a word of guidance or instruction. And he says, all other things behave like this. But this one thing I have is going to make you overcome. For example, for Elijah, Elisha, Elisha, it was a court. He got his coat and struck the waters of the Jordan. And the Jordan River provided a way for him. He overcame by crossing. For Moses, it was a stick. Stick. He cut from the jungle. It was a stick that God used in the hands of Moses to conquer Egypt. Literally, the whatever or whatsoever here means whatsoever God says, this is it. That is it. There is where Jesus said that if you people stop these people from praising and exalting my name, <laughs> I'm going to make these stones rise up and praise my name. Do you know that stones can sing? How many know that stones can sing? You don't know. Let me help you to unwrap that for you. Anything you see, metal. Was one day a stone. You see the stone that you are looking at. Was one day a stone. Runa kulumutiarike jinja. Anything which is metal. E chintu chone che chuma. Was one day a stone. Runa kulumutiarike jinja. You see the wires on this jitter. Katola ba vuno wire ovuli kuchuma chino. They are stones. But when you pull it like this, it makes sound and people dance. <laughs> that means a stone can sing. If I hit this podium, I can make music out of this. If I get two metals and hit them. You see these 
These high hats and symbols. Uh, they are one day stones. Now you are using them for music. <laughs> <laughs> so it is the little vision you have out of something. That may limit you from seeing the broadness of what God can produce as fruits over one thing he has given you. He has put in your hands. Or something around you. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. During COVID, I'm beginning with this to broaden your view of understanding. A certain man got certain leaves and gambled with them and mixed them and boiled them and started using them for chua. And God bear unto this man a formula of which he lives to mix. And the leaves conquered the COVID virus. It overcame. Whoever used that formula overcame. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Whatever. Nothing on this planet is new. God made whatever he made as seeds and placed them on the planet. And in each seed, he hid the potential power of producing diverse fruits. That's why when you look at the tree, you would see leaves, bark, and stem, and all that. A tree is in a seedy form. But out of that same tree, there are many fruits that have been produced by different people. As God bears in them, Ideas. Visions. Dreams. Out of trees, people have built houses. Out of trees, people have made chairs. Out of trees, people have made tables. Out of trees, we have speakers here. Out of trees, we have paper money. Notes. Out of money, we have books. Out of trees, we have pharmaceutical industries. Out of trees, we have car tires. Out of trees, we have fruits. Out of trees, we have toothpicks we are importing from China. You can imagine somebody thinking of letting me help people in Africa. He gets a toothpick, and you buy it in dollars to bring it in Uganda to use it on your table. And you put the money in that person's pocket. And for you, the only biggest dream you have out of a tree is for cooking food. <laughs> the highest technology is making charcoal. <laughs> Whatsoever is born of God, don't despise it. It overcomes the world. You can't imagine somebody conquering the whole market, global market, using toothpicks. 
exports. And these toothpicks go to the president's tables, to the pope's table, to the king's table. To and that's an idea God gave him. Huh? 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 Another one got scoops for ice cream. Omulanafuna <laughs> ice cream. Huh? Out of a tree. Okita muti. So, whatsoever is born of God, that is set by God, and you can't do anything about it, but just allow God use it in your life as And he continues to say, and this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. And what is the faith? Faith is nothing more but things hoped for. <laughs> Some things hoped for. Things you see as though they are even when they are not. Your faith is that insight. It's that vision you perceive. And you picture it out. And you focus on it. And you purpose to make it be, or be produced. And this is where I want to take you to God's original vision. So that you may be guided as we go deeper into digging in this understanding of the idea of overcoming. How many want to overcome? Yes. Everybody desires to be an overcomer. But it's not so easy to many people. And it's not so hard to some people to overcome. Only that we vary in the way we perceive the truth of issues. That's why we go deeper into making it more plainer through different angles. That maybe in one view or in one way of presentation, somebody will pick something. Are we together? So, the overcomer's mindset. That's where we are. Those who have just joined us, you are most welcome. You look nice and good. But we want to tune you on the platform of overcomers. And we are working on the mindset. That's what we are unwrapping in this service. Because the Bible says that I pray that you may prosper even as your soul prosper. That's why you want to deal with your mindset. So that in whatever way things come, you may be positioned to make it. The Bible says in Bible Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Genesis 1. Are you in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26? 
Somebody on the computer, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. It says, and God said, let us make man in our image. And there is a comma there. Understand the word image. That if you are a man, God made you as a seed. But out of God's treatment and working on you in the, on the world today, he wanted to perfect you and work on you until you become an image of himself. That whatever looks at you may see God. You graduate from where you are to become a God. Things respond to you as a God. They worship you. They glorify you. They praise you. They feel happy when you are around. They see you as a God. And I'm going to show you how things are been progressing in some people's lives. And he continued to say, after our likeness, that you don't only image as God, but even in your likeness. In your stature, in whatever you do, things respond as they do and do God. That is his original vision. And he said, let them have dominion. That was the equipping he gave you to have dominion is to be in charge of all things. He gave you that right and power and potential and it's in you to make things work out for your good. To go by your word. He continued to say and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the fowl of the air over the cattle and over all the earth. Over all the earth means all rocks, all minerals, all springs of water, all gold, all diamonds, all whatever the earth has. Tree. And over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Verse 27. And he says, So God created man in his own image. Not any other image. He created you so that as you progressively develop, you in the end be him. And God created him male and female. Created he them. Are you a woman? No excuse. <laughs> you are supposed to one day be a God. Are you a man? No excuse. You are supposed to be a God. Male and female. However, when you go deeply and read more deeper in other verses after that, you will notice there is no way a God gave man to have dominion over another man. Because 
He gave you over the fish, over the birds, over the animals, over the minerals, over the trees. But nowhere he says you have dominion over another human being. Are we together? And Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 29. He says, look, this only have I found that God has made man upright. Upright is supposed to be looking up to him. Man is, was created to be like this. In the way it's supposed to relate with God. Man is on the planet Earth, but he was created to always look up like this. And to God. That's why Jesus said, I do nothing on my own, but everything I do, I first see what my Father in heaven is doing. <laughs> That means always he will be looking up in heaven. He would get instructions from the Father, not sideways. The scripture says, but men have sought out many invasions. God made them to look up. You see all plants? Look outside. All trees, irrespective of their kind. They are not bothered about what is around them. Each plant is looking up. And by that, God provides that plant with whatever it needs, although it does not move. It is only human beings that look sideways. They start comparing themselves to neighbors. I am tall, you are short. <laughs> I'm handsome, you are ugly. <laughs> you are big, I'm small. You are land, I'm not land. God made you to look up, my friend. Not to compare yourself with your surroundings. That's why things are becoming hard for you. Instead of taking in what comes from God who created you and placed you here. You are pumping a lot of irrelevance in you which was not meant to be in your way. That you barely hear even what God says. You hear a lot of what the surroundings speak. That's why things are hard for you. You see birds and all other creatures. They are not bothered by what is in their neighborhood. Early in the morning, they wake up and they look up in the skies. They don't look sideways. They don't look down. They look up and they praise God for the new day. They, they say, thank you God that you have given us another day. This day we know we are going to be fed from whichever angle of food will come. And as they continue to praise the brightness of the day, opens more and more. At the end, when everything is bright, yeah. shining, the first direction where they face, they have faith. That that's where food will be. So they set off flying. <laughs> they start flying that ne, direction. Ne and I want to, grant, to, to guarantee you that by the end of the day, they will come back fed. 
But man has no time to look up. They look on their watch. They look on their programs. They look at their clothes. Then without even attending to the maker and design of the day. I'm going to look for money. <laughs> they start looking for money. Which money they don't know what they are going to make out of it. They That's why most people wake up, go to work, but they don't overcome. Because they are mishandling the laws of righteousness of the planet. They don't do things as they are meant to be done. Let me give you this scripture as well before maybe I continue. It has come to my mind. Job Yobu 38. I think verse 12 of oh, 14, 13 there. Let me see. Aha, uh -huh. yes. Let's begin from 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days? Have you commanded the morning since your days? And cause the death spring to know his place. Have you commanded when you wake up in the morning? Do you command the day before you do anything? That this new day God has given me. This is the faith I have. Things must be in harmony. I am going to be well. I am going to be fortunate. I am going to make a deal. And this deal will be a great fortune for me. I am going to meet an anxieties. I am counseling all the sorrows of the day. Today my business is going to profit. This is what God is going to do for me in this day. The Bible says here that when you do that, the day as it springs up, it positions you as God who is in you has directed Verse 13. It says, Agamba. That it might take hold of the ends of the earth. So when you command the day, the day goes all over the planet earth and searches out what you have prophesied. And he continues to say that. The wicked might be shaken out of it. <laughs> the wicked. When you command your direction of each day. In God. By placing your faith in him that things are going to be like you. Then the day goes out and shakes out all the wickedness. Kati and removes it in your, from your world of destiny. You are supposed to command. It's well with me. Whether things don't prove to be, you say it is well with me. Other people's affairs may fail, but me, it's not going to fail. And this brings me again to remember how my daughter always confesses when we are playing at home. Of, of recently, we were playing a certain game in our compound. And time was running spent in the course of the day. I had to do some other business before it stuck. So I told her, let me go and do this. He said, Daddy, wait a minute. Linda. It's not over until I win. Let's play until I win. So I had to 
sacrifice some more minutes to make her counting go above my counting. <laughs> and when her counting went above my counting, he said, now that it's okay, you can go and do business. So, if you are an overcomer, it's not over until you win. You get the point. That should be the slogan, the slogan you carry in each day's break. In this day, I, I am not going to retire. I'm not going to sleep. Like David said, I will not give my head sleep till I find a place for myself. That is it. That's an overcomer's mindset. You don't just say, ah, oh, that's how God wants. No. God gave you dominion over the earth. And he gave you the keys. To open and to rock. And many times I hear people say, God, you open doors for me. God cannot open for you when it's you who has the keys. It is you to go and turn the key of whatever you want to open. Then the door will open by God's power. Are you going to move nations? God gave you that call to go nations. You have to open which number one country you want to go to Mawanga. Which door of a country you want to open? As you turn the key, then God's power swings the door open. Because there are no aeroplanes that fly different destinations at the same time. No. You have to purpose. And focus on a certain nation. I have begun my call of nations. And my number one nation is Switzerland. Which kid do you have? Let me go and see where the embassy is. Let me go to the internet and see what these people lifestyle internet. is. What do they eat? Where is this nation? What is the weather there? As you get yourself informed, day by day there will be progress towards the day you get your feet on a plane. And the destination will not be to any other country. It will be to Switzerland. Can the plane take you anywhere? Yes. But your key opened a door to Switzerland. Will you meet challenges? Yes. Well, wow. Because in any way, God, our God, up to now, He is still hurt by the embarrassment He got. When He created all creation in heaven and on earth. He was embarrassed at a certain time when the angels after knowing some ways of maneuver of how God made things they rebelled against him huh? and revolted and they made chaos in heaven. And from that experience, God saw by his name. 
I will never let creatures know their way from beginning to the end. I don't want them to rebel anymore. So what did he do? God created man. <laughs> And after creating man, let me show you what he did. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11. Ecclesiastes 3, 11, he says, He says, He has made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he has set the world in their hearts so that no man can find out the work that God makes from the beginning to the end. So God did what? God created man. He said, God created up things. Purposely, he did it. He mixed up things into a puzzle. In each one's life, who is here? Your life, God purposely designed it as a puzzle so that you may not work out your way. From beginning to end. By yourself. Without him. That's why he said what? He said. Because I have did have done that. In Isaiah 45. Verse 7. Read this with me. Very interesting. 45 he says. I form the light and I create darkness. I make peace and I create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. It's not Satan. <laughs> it is God, the design of evil. So that you may not track your way alone. There is in your way of destiny where God is going to take you through an evil experience. But it is your way for your success. And blessing. So that when you get there, you will look at the evil he has led you through. And he will want you to understand that if it had not been him with you, you would not go where you are. So, he deserves your worship and praise. He purposely did that. That's why he says, I created a blessing and I created a curse. I created good I created bad. So pastor, why are we casting out the demons and devils and fighting set and left and right up and down? The, it is you creating your own innovations, my friend. God never called you to fight Satan. God told you just to resist him. <laughs> By just not obeying what he says, that is all. <laughs> just obey God what he says. So God demands your obedience and that is it. But the way he is going to take you, that is his business. That's where in scripture, there's where it says, there is no man does who does, there's no just man who does good without doing sin. 
Huh? Have you ever read that scripture? I think it is somewhere in Ecclesiastes 7, somewhere I think. Uh, I think, sorry, I want to, I don't remember, but uh, it's somewhere, I think, there. Or or seven or eight, whatever. Uh, there's no just man who does not sin. That means God designed to whatever thing you see in the world. There is a positive and a negative. Way. Where there is light, there is darkness. And where there is darkness, there is light. Where there is something high, there is something low. Where there is something big, there is something small. Where there is poverty, there is wealth. Where there is wealth, there is poverty. It is true. You see water? It is in water also where fire is. That's why you see the constitutes of water are the same constitutes of fire. This is oxygen and hydrogen. Oxygen oxygen. That's why when you see it's going to rain. Masses of water crash into each other in the skies. And they form lightning, which is fire. So when you want to put out fire, you get water. When you want to put out water, you introduce the fire. The water will escape. So one is in the other. In every man, there is a woman. And in every woman, there is a man. That's why a man can produce male children and female children. Yes. Checho. Pastor. Musumba. This is deep science. No. Ono science wa uziva neda. This is the heavenly common science which you missed. Hallelujah. Ono science we guru guwa subwa. So. The Bible is very interesting when you get to know it. Bible ya nyuma nyo singo jitegeira. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 13. Omuvulizi musamvu kumina satu. It says something I want to paint out to you to make things more deeper. It says consider the work of God. Do you hear that statement? Anything, if it is a work of God, consider. Don't take things for granted that that's how they are supposed to be. If it is God in charge, suspend your reasoning. Because he says there is a way that looks right to a person, but the, 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 the end thereof is death. And there is a way that looks like it is death when the end of it is where life is. So if you are going to be an overcomer and you are going to put your faith in God, Never be attempted to create formulas. Suspend all formal thinking, taking things for formality. And be more ready to hear what God tells you and obey. And that's how you're going to overcome. Are you Moses? You are going to confront a superpower nation, Egypt. According to God, he says you need only that stick you have. To attack a nation like America with America. And if you are going to use your science and technology, you will look a fool. 
Am I talking? So he continued to say, Again, so gamba. For who can make that straight which he has made crooked? Hallelujah. That means there are things God intentionally made crooked. <laughs> Intentionally, he made them crooked in your own destiny. Will be crooked whether you are rich, whether you have the money, whether you have all the gifts and talents. There are moments that are going to manifest as crooked as you walk in your own life. Let me ask a question. Did Jesus sin? Yes, we are known. Did he sin? No. But a crooked day came to him when he was going on the cross. <laughs> it was a crooked scenario, my friend. And even those who saw say, ah, he said he was a son of God. <laughs> How can he be defeated by getting off the cross? <laughs> he has been even raising the dead. That moment God had purposely designed it crooked. And Jesus had to go on the cross through that crooked way in order to overcome. He continued to say, verse 14. In the day of prosperity, be joyful. But in the day of adversity, consider. God has also set one over against the other. To the end that man should find nothing after him. Telling you that's how God purpose to make things. Why? He demands your obedience to him. And not use your own thinking. That you can liberate yourself from him. He swore by his name never to suffer that embarrassment. God will show you a big vision of whatever he wants to make of you. But he will never show you how you are going to get there. He will take you step by step. Day by day. One day will lead you through a joyful moment where things are prosperous. <laughs> when you, you will get money and you say, now who is there that I should bless? Hey! This has been my miracle dream. Somebody come, I take you for power. You and that in the tables and everyone say, yes, sister. <laughs> you are the only one, you are guy. But he says you also. There is a day when you will be on the other side when you are the one to receive now. When you look for 500 and it's not there. <laughs> because he has placed one thing after another. And he says at that time consider. Why he did that. So that it may be a lesson to you. That when you are prosperous and blessed. Consider those who are lacking. Yes. Consider my friend. Because very soon. <laughs> you are going to be where they are. And they will be where you are. <laughs> where you are. He did that. In your work of life, it is there. I'm telling you, it is there. Look at all those so called prosperous people. Today, people 
are committing suicide with their wealth. You know why? They see they have grown out of age. They see what they have accumulated around them. But none of their children is interested. Some of their children have gone to drugs. They are completely spoiled and nowhere in any mind that they can take over what they have accumulated. Others have gone to the pinnacles of wealth. They are multi-billionaires. They have literally every material stuff. But they are fearful of everybody around them. They sleep in houses alone. They fly in private jets alone. <laughs> they have to pay for everybody who is around them as security. <laughs> they go in mansions and a mansion, a big house that covers the area of this church area and all around. They can't literally sleep in any hotel or they are fearful of anyone else in the hotel. They have to, to buy those expensive, you know, Assets in but every country they go. Private homes, swimming pools, with planes, with whatever. And they take years without going there. But they have to pay money to maintain. Maybe three years from now I'll go to my home in Germany when I'm there for business. Maybe sometime I'll go to Japan and meet the president for this deal. The homes are there. Draining money from whatever they have accumulated. Maintaining the water bills, electricity, cleaners, flowerists, people who prepare food because they don't know when the boss will ever come. So the people who prepare, they are enjoying them when they, before they go bad. They are enjoying. Huh? They are both expensive boats. They are there. Landing pads for the helicopters there. there. But life cannot allow them to be there all the time. And when they are there, they have to spend to know who do I go with in that place. And I've learned of recent there are women who are landed in that world, they are called the gold diggers. Oh, they are there to be taken by these rich ones. <laughs> they present them, you know, exotic and very expensive. <laughs> To be hired, to go and take up, and then they dig gold out of these rich guys. Because they are fearful of, literally, of everybody. And yet, they were created to be social beings, to be other people. But the bubbles around them cannot allow them to allow everybody to come around. Buy expensive cars, planes, but no time to drive them. Because when they are supposed to drive those cars, they are, they are supposed to pay for the security entry of like a president to move with <laughs> them. <laughs> to, to drive like <laughs> Benny Chiwanuka, they have security everywhere, <laughs> clear the roads, hey, nowhere to stop. Tinted the glass, bulletproof up. But security. The air they breathe, they have to pay for it, pumped through machines. Oh, you know, hey, what are you talking about? The Bible says, consider. One is set against the other. That's why Jesus was a unique rich man. Most people think Jesus was a poor, no. He was one of the richest guys in the world. Actually, the richest. Actually, Did you know that? All oh, they preached to you, he was that poor man with one garment. No, Jesus was one of the richest guys. 
Can I show you that? How many have ever found that scripture? Second Corinthians 8, 9. Let's get that scripture, then we get back to this. I want to just clear your mind so that you get to know. Yes, he says, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is though he was rich. Mark that. He was what? Though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor. That you through his poverty might be rich. What does that mean? Jesus was a Mount Billion or two years ago. Staying in the executive quarters of Kororo wherever you want. But oftentimes, he would sacrifice his dignity and walk on foot and go to the slum of Chisenyi to, to meet a friend like you and me. <laughs> so that he may give you a treat of a rich man's life. So that your mindset may change. They say, when you're eating a banana, you don't throw the whole thing inside. You cut it with a knife and a fork and you eat a banana in an expensive way. You use first class porcelain glass to serve yourself, not your fingers. You, you don't drink a soda from the bottle. You may get bottle clumps in your throat. Pour in the glass. Put a lemon there. Treat it with ice tubes and then my friend Make sure the glass is so transparent you Kakasa, see whatever is inside. And put on a napkin and then you take it expensively like napkin. a soda. O Come on, that is a sort of a rich man's life. But it's the same cock. Hallelujah. You don't swallow the whole onion. You cut slice small stuff. Small, small stuffs of the tomato. Small slices of paper. Ka paper. Tiny grated slices of uh, carrot. Carrot no kasalanga katonoto no. Then you get that and you mix it with your chapati and you make a chumbari and you eat like a rich man. No, tomato with chapati no And this business of getting a whole heap of tomatoes and you smash them and start making soup out of them, you die when you are still young. Hallelujah. Time has gone. But let's finish the other scripture we were reading. Of Corinthians, uh, Ecclesiastes 7. The computer man has disappeared. <laughs> Are you there? Oh, okay, okay. Ecclesiastes. Seven. Uh, verse 12. We were verse 14. I want to take you through that so that we end with that. He says, Aha. Uh -huh. Let's go to verse 15. He says, All things I have seen in the days of my vanity. There is a just man that perishes in his righteousness. Touch your neighbor. At your neighbor, somebody next to you. Come on. Say, Say, sister, oh brother, you can be righteous and you die in your righteousness. He continued to say, and there is a wicked man that prolongs his life in his wickedness. Ah, I do right, then I die before my days. And then somebody who is wicked, he lives longer. This is an imbalance of justice. No, it is not. It is just because you are less informed of the truth. The 
planet was created with two forces always. And God leads you in a way as he desires. He can purpose the right way to be in what looks like wrong. And another time he can purpose to take you in what looks as right when he's leading you into trouble. You have been poor. God blesses you with a lot of money. When he's setting you for a trap to see your faithfulness. <laughs> then all of a sudden he comes like he came to Abraham after <laughs> looking for a child for a long time. And then he tells me, sacrifice that child. Do you know what that means? Hey, do you know what that means? The only child. You have waited for more than a hundred years. At a time when the child is really Exciting, and you really can converse. You feel you it's have a, a, a person along with you, with you a, a, pass, a, a friend, a companion, a hair. Then a dream comes and tells you, my friend, sacrifice this child in the morning. That is good. He continued to say, verse 16, be not Righteous over much. <laughs> Touch somebody and say, Don't be over righteous so much. <laughs> I'm born again. <laughs> Though I'm single. I don't want any man to touch me. Hey, 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 don't move out with boys or girls. You will die single, my friend. In how will they see me when I go out to, to, for, for a treaty at Cafe Javas? You may get stranded the rest of your years, my friend. There are times you have to close your eyes and say. They were created to say, let them say, I'm going to have a treat with a friend. And we sit there and I get to know this guy before I commit myself. Yes. Well, wow. By faith, you risk and say, yes, let's <laughs> go. <laughs> you put on your jeans, you can put on five of them, but all the same you go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he says, lastly, neither make thyself overwise. Why should you die? Uh, you have uh, jumped away from that scripture 16. I was still reading 16. Uh -huh. He says, Why should you destroy yourself? Uh -huh. 17. Be not overmuch wicked, neither be thou foolish. Why should you die before your time? Verse 18. It is good that thou should take hold of this. Yes. Also from this withdraw not your hand. For he that fears God shall come forth of them all. That means shall overcome all scenarios. If you fear God that means always you will give him room to first speak to your heart which is the right way to go. If you fear God, in whatever step you are going to take, God will prompt you whether to take a step forward or backwards. Be like the birds. What do you lose when you take your cares to God first before you venture? What do you lose? 
God does not need long prayers. He just needs your honesty. In whatever you tell him, that is all. It could be one word, but you exactly express what you mean. As simple as that. Then you allow him to speak back to you in accordance to what you spoke to him. Then you overcome. I'm telling you. Do you have a child? You want your child to make it in life? There is where God will speak to you about your child and say, Discipline this child. According to what he, this child has done, get a cane. Not words. Get a cane. And give him five. And after you have given him five, make this child sit there. And tell them, never do this again. Because if you do it again, it will lead you to A, B, C, D. Then at certain occasions, God will say, don't cane this child. Bring this child over and speak to this child nicely with a hug and a kiss. However grievous this child has messed up. That's how God works. For you to overcome, God demands you to give him your ears. May God bless you in Jesus' name. I don't want to give you much. Just those few little re remarks about an overcomer's mindset. Wake up with a purpose. Aim at something. And tell yourself, it's not over until I win. But don't depend on your understanding. Things may work out good. But don't tell yourself it will always work like that. There is an advantage just at the corner. Prepare for it. With a positive mind. Don't say immediately this is Satan. And you start casting out in Jesus' name. No. Always confront challenges as opportunities of another alternative way of making things happen. Ask yourself, God, why am I here? Why are things like this? When you ask that question, then God will realize you are attentive now to hear always what he says. You will tell you the reason why things are happening like that. And I'm telling you very soon, he will tell you, had it been that scenario, you will not have got this. I'm telling you, that's how God works because he's a parent to us. In our lives, there are certain things at times he has to remove to make us fit for what blessing he wants to bless in our lives. That's why God cannot make you rich when he has not tested you in how faithful you are in handling other people's money. He can't. He will test you and test you and test you. 
This person's heart is now rich. Even if he loses a million, he will not curse everybody around. Then he will give you billion years. Because in life, there is where you will make losses. And there are times when you make fortunes. But you have to remain sober. <laughs> huh? When you are rich, it doesn't mean you put on a big pot belly to show everybody money has come. <laughs> Actually, very rich people who have learned the principles of wealth, most of them are in shape. You see this Aaron Musik who is making robots? Eh? The Tesla guy, very rich guy. But almost my size. Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Very rich guys. But uh, moderate, not potty-bedded guys. That oh, these poor ones are the ones you find eating five kilos of pork. Ah, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> telling you. I'm telling you. you. You should be yourself like Jesus. You are the richest guy. But you can afford to go to Lazarus' house and you take a meal there. Without expecting somebody poisoning you. Right? The Bible says Lazarus was poor, but he, Jesus, he was Jesus' friend. How many friends do you have in Ichisen? Not very many. Sibanj. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's pray as we are. Because of time. Loving Father, we are so grateful for this opportunity you have given us to be in your presence. To learn more of what mind we should have to be overcomers. We are so thankful to get this enlightenment about the world in which we are. That in us you purpose to be the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Even as you make us Lords and Gods and Kings. Mm. May your position be preserved in us as number one. That always we may look up to you in order to realize our victory. Strengthen our faith. Let all noise and confusion be cast out of our hearts. Let all insecurity and uncertainty be cast out of our minds. Let our confidence in you be strengthened by the fact that you are God so much aware of each one of us. Even whatever is happening in our lives, we commit it before you. May you take charge. We pray for peace. We pray for health. We pray for wealth. We pray for harmony. We pray for victory over the world that we may purposely become your children. So therefore, we pray that your kingdom come and your will be done in the earth as things are done in heaven in Jesus' mighty holy name. And somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. So if you have an offering, a tithe, or any fruit you are brought with, with you, please, you can bring it in the basket and God bless you. And turn to your neighbor and say, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of our God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God bless you.